<laughs> Morning. Morning. Happy Father's Day. <clears throat> Welcome to the 2016 Citizens Climate Education Citizens Climate Lobby Conference. <clears throat> if you're returning to this conference today, Welcome home. If this is your first time attending, could you stand up so we could specially welcome you? Great. Okay, what, I, what I'd like you to notice about that is, is that there's a lot of people who are brand new to the conference, but there's also a lot of people who have been here a bunch of times. So if you're here for the first time, and I know for a lot of us, the first time we're going on Capitol Hill, there's a certain amount of nervousness or anxiety about that. Uh, there's a lot of experienced people here who will make it uh, as comfortable and easy for you to, to go to Capitol Hill and be successful there. But if you do have a certain level of nervousness, I think that's appropriate. Uh, I think that given the opportunity in front of us, given what we're able to do with Congress, we should have a certain level of anxiety, so I think that's a healthy thing. You know, it's kind of like, you know sometimes people tell you they're not nervous speaking in front of people? I never understand that. I, re I really don't. You know, I think that if you have the privilege of standing in front of people and that maybe there's some chance something you say might contribute, that should give you some pause. So if you have some anxiety for being in Capitol Hill, I think that's a really good thing and I'm glad that's the case. Um, I do want to give everybody a chance just to say thank you. There's an enormous amount of work that goes into this conference, so you know, if you are happy seeing your schedule arrive in your inbox along with previous meeting notes, meeting plans, bios, all that kind of stuff, all, all that kind of work's done. So if we could just take a moment and give a, a hand to the staff and the interns who did all that work. Okay, so uh, let's just check in a little bit of, of who's here. So if this is your second or third conference, so that the last two years we were also at this hotel, so if this is your second or third conference, could you stand up for just a second? Great, welcome back. And if this is your fourth, fifth, or sixth conference, so that might have been the Liaison Hotel, the Convention Center, Crystal City in Virginia, could you stand up if you're fourth, fifth, or sixth conference? <clears throat> and if this is your seventh conference, the 24 of us that were at the Marriott seven years ago, <laughs> could you stand up if you're one of those people? Wow. Great. So you'll notice that's Gene Johnson and everybody else who, st who stood up is on staff. <laughs> Which leads us to believe that if you hang out around here long enough, we will hire you. Um, also, let's just check to see who's traveled a long way. So if you came all the way from the West Coast, could you stand up if the West Coast of the US? People? <clears throat> And if uh, U.S. and you came even further from that, if you're from Alaska, could you stand up? Alaskans. Wow. <clears throat> George, George, could you stay standing for just a second? George is a fisherman. This is the time of year he's supposed to make all of his money every year he's here. It's remarkable. George, thank you. If you were on last month's call, you know we had a big lobby event in Canada, but nevertheless we have Canadians here this year, remarkable, even they were on Capitol, I mean Parliament Hill in Ottawa two weeks ago. So if you're Canadian, could you stand up if you're from Canada? If you're from Great Britain, could you stand up? Wow.
Okay, is there, is there anybody else from Europe besides the, the Brits? I, I think that the people, all we had was from, who, okay, what country? Serbia, that's right, fantastic, wow. Amazing. Jeez. Okay, let's say by just chance you're from the Marshall Islands. If you're from the Marshall Islands, could you stand up? There we go, right there. <laughs> Did I miss any other countries? Yeah. <laughs> Panama? Wow. Incredible. So Panama, if you didn't hear, fantastic. Any other countries I miss? China? Seriously? Wow. Remarkable. <clears throat> okay, cool. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> I know one of the things that all of us look forward to this every year is uh, having Marshall make his opening comments. And um, this year, Marshall had a really rough year with his health, and for most of the year, we were sure he wasn't coming. Um, and so, he's here, his health's improving, and so we're happy about that. But so, we thought, you know, what if Marshall doesn't come? What do we do? Who can do that talk? So our plan B is we had been working with the White House, and <laughs> seriously, and we, we didn't want to deal with the security concerns, so we'd been working on having uh, President Obama Skype in if Marshall couldn't make it. Now, I've heard he's a pretty good public speaker, so we thought that would be an okay replacement. <laughs> but anyway, um, we're really, really happy. Marshall's health's improved. Uh, he is going to be able to make our welcoming comments, and we're really happy to turn the mic over to you, Mr. Saunders. Good morning. Welcome, and uh, I am delighted, <laughs> delighted to see you. And I did not see you coming. <laughs> and here you are, uh, a thousand. I'm, I'm told you there's a thousand or more of you here, and so welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome. Um, I just want to tell you this little story about how this thing got started. And, um, and the first group start meeting and how that came to be. And uh, I wish I could tell you that I thought it all out, <laughs> made a business plan. We followed the business plan and here we are. But that's not what happened. And so uh, I just want to tell you that little story. And I hope you enjoy it. So back uh, nine years ago, in uh, 2007, I was giving the Inconvenient Truth Talks, the Al Gore Inconvenient Truth Talks. And uh, it was going pretty well. I was giving one a week. I was excited. I loved every one of them. But I had to chase every one of them down. I had to literally invite myself to, to service clubs and churches and schools. And, uh, but as I say, it was going pretty well. I was calling on enough of those organizations. Then, one day, I got a call out of the blue. It was an organization that I had not invited myself to. <laughs> and uh, it was the International Affairs Club of Rancho Bernardo. So you may not know Rancho Bernardo, not being from California, but it's a pretty big place. And I thought this is going to be an, uh, an impressive uh, group. So I was excited about it. So 
When I got there, it turned out to be the International Affairs Club of, in a retirement home <laughs> in Rancho Bernardo. So uh, 10 or 12 retirees had come downstairs to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> See what I had to say. <laughs> um, I gave them uh, uh, the slideshow, no, and it included uh, Michael Mann's hockey stick curve and all of that. Gave them the slideshow. It took about 30 minutes. Uh, so and then I was complete. And uh, so how about questions? Any questions? First question. An elderly lady on the back row uh, against the wall, she said, I can't read with the new light bulbs. <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> then she said, uh, could I use two of the new light bulbs, but just for reading? I said, I, I don't know. <laughs> then she wanted to know, very insistent lady, she wanted to know if it would be better to use two of the new kind of light bulbs or one of the old kind. And. Uh, I said, well, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> well, um, I didn't do very well on the first question, so. Next question, a lady not next to her, but one over from her, again, against the back wall. She said, uh, well, what should we, uh, we do? What should we do? And uh, there I was, I was kind of, cornered and I finally I finally said well what's needed is the methodology of results where hundreds I didn't see a thousand a hundreds of people organize themselves um, get educated lobby their members of Congress and the media in a relentless, unstoppable way, and yet friendly. Why don't you do that, she said. <laughs> so she's pushing 90 years old, but she's, you know, she's kind of got it together. Why don't you do that, she said. And uh, again, I was kind of trapped. Uh, <laughs> I said, well, I, I haven't done that because nobody would come to a meeting like that. And I look out at you and I said, and at that time I said, nobody would show up. <laughs> and uh, she said, well, I'll help you. I'll help you. So, you know, there's these 10 retirees, elderly, distinguished people looking at me, and uh, what was I going to do? And I said, okay, well, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. You know, w was there anything else to say? I don't know. <laughs> and so the meeting was over, and Pam and I drove back to Coronado. It's about 45 minutes south to where we live. And... Uh, I called back up to Rancho Bernardo to the library. It's right near the retirement home. And I rented a room. <clears throat> and I started inviting people to come. Well, now, again, Coronado is about a 45-minute drive south of Rancho Bernardo. And I'm talking to people. And uh, I'm thinking, I I'm telling them it's a three-hour presentation. And uh, so, so I'm thinking these people are not going to come. And um, maybe they are, maybe they're not, but they're not being real clear about it. <laughs> and um, so let's see. So I was worried. And I called 
my new friend, my helper in the retirement home, to see how the inviting was going on her end. Well, guess what? No answer. And uh, so a few days later, I called back and uh, no answer. No answer. So maybe on the fourth call, her husband answered the phone and said, uh, her name was Lee, Lee's arthritis has kicked up and she's not going to help you. <laughs> she's not going to help you. So it occurred to me to call it off, but I didn't know who was coming and not coming by that point. And I kept inviting. So um, on the morning of the talk of the presentation, Pam and I got there early to set up the room. And um, we couldn't find it. <laughs> we couldn't find it. We looked all over. The lady behind the counter didn't know where it was. <laughs> and I thought, this is not ideal, is it? <laughs> so it turned out that the, that the room was uh, not inside the library, but uh, up an outside stairway and around to the back of the building on a second deck walkway through a door on the left <laughs> down two hallways down two hallways and through a door on the right and I thought God <laughs> if anybody actually tries to come to this thing if they get as far as the parking lot <laughs> they're not going to find this room so um, there we were, and uh, 28 people did show up. 28 people showed up. And with uh, like five minutes to go, uh, number 29 showed up. He probably lost somewhere. <laughs> and and uh, so they... There we were, and uh, I poured my heart out to them. I have a little music stand, and uh, sometimes I get excited, and I thought, I'm going to fly over the music stand and land in somebody's lap. <laughs> and uh, so um, <clears throat> it, I, as I say, I knew about half of them. The other half, I don't know how they found out about it. And who invited them? You know, I, I just didn't know. So, um, let me just see where we are here. Well, at the end of the talk, you know, just like at the end, now my heart is in my throat. And uh, it's time to ask the punchline question. Like, how many of you want to do this thing with me? And uh, I needed four. I felt like to have a team, you have to have four. Well, every last hand in the room went up. Every last hand in the room went up. You know, and I didn't see them coming either. Um, well, we, with 28 people, we divided into three groups. There was uh, North County, Central San Diego. John was on the first Central San Diego group. And, uh, and then the South Bay. I called Brent Blackwell, then president of Friends of Earth, <clears throat> asked him if he'd be our guest speaker. He said yes. I was amazed that he would do that. He's kind of like the dean of Washington lobbyists. And he'd stepped out of a board meeting and call us on his cell phone. And uh, <clears throat> I had that morning prepared a script, and uh, which I hoped was inspiring. And uh, that's how. CCL got started. Trapped by two elderly ladies in a restaurant. <laughs> uh, 
28 and then 29 volunteers who showed up on a Saturday morning not knowing what to expect or what they might be getting into. And uh, they had found their way up the outside stairway and around to the back of the building and down two hallways and through a door on the right. And uh, and you, you keep showing up. And who are you? I see you as the world's best hope. Like, no kidding. You're the world's best hope. You're citizens in a democracy. You have access to your government. That's not true everywhere. You have done the work to organize yourselves and educate yourselves. And you are relentless and unstoppable. And so that's who you are for me, the world's best hope. Thank you, and I love you. So I know we got a chance to um, thank the staff and interns who worked on this, but, but ev almost everybody in this room put an enormous amount of work. So if you uh, scheduled an appointment, if you updated a bio, if you helped somebody financially, if, you, uh, if you're one of the speakers, you know, if you're somebody who contributed to this conference happening, could you also stand up so we can thank everybody who, who worked on putting this conference on? Okay, so it's a, it's a, hu it's a huge en endeavor, and we're already at work on next year's conference, so it's a, it's a year-long effort. It's a big push. Uh, a lot of people do a lot of things, but one person carries it all, uh, and that is... <laughs> um. <laughs> you know, when you do something like this, one person has to organize it, all of it, 84 speakers, all the meeting rooms, all the sleeping rooms, all the materials, everything you get, making sure the drummers are hidden away, <laughs> you know, all those kinds of things. And um, it's, it's, it's really hard to describe the job that Ashley does every year, but she's going to come up and go over some of the conference details, and I would be extremely grateful if you would show some appreciation for what she does every year. Yeah. hard to not be choked up after that, but let's get to business, because <laughs> I'm good at that. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about your folders for just a minute. Um, so they're beautiful this year. I'm glad we were able to have beautiful folders. And so inside of them are some very important um, details. So in the back on the right side are clipped together some papers that we'll use for the training tonight. I remember my first conference, I shuffled through papers, I couldn't find them, I lost things, they were in the wrong order. We clipped them for you, so you know you'll need those later tonight, so you can just leave them there till then. Um, and in front of that would be your one page uh, media, double-sided, it's the media handout. And so this is something um, that you can leave in member of Congress's office if, if offices if you want to, to demonstrate our...
Uh, and we've got a bunch more copies out um, on the tables. And so I recommend grabbing another one or two um, so everyone has enough for their meetings. And you can, of course, take these home with you and use them locally as well. These are all available on the resources page um, on our website, um, which you have a link to in the back of your program. So you can download these and use them um, for future events. Uh, in front of that, we've got the meeting notes forms. Um, those are the white and yellow copies. And so um, these are for your meetings, those for the note takers, uh, really important job. Danny's gonna go over more about that later today. We've got extra copies of those too. So if you uh, feel like you need some more, that's fine. We've also got some comment cards in your folders. And uh, we've got so many people here this year, over a thousand people. So uh, to make that, um, the comments and questions at the end of our um, speakers' presentations, both the plenary presentations and your breakout sessions, um, this is probably gonna be the most efficient way so we can get the most questions possible asked and answered. So um, they're gonna be amazing interns. So if you're an intern, just wave so we can say thank you to you. They might all be out in the hallway working. <laughs> so uh, our amazing interns are gonna be collecting these um, to keep the session moving um, along. Okay, on the left side, we've got our official leave behind, um, which Danny's gonna go over. You should have about two or three copies of that in your folder. We've got more of those as well. And then we have a little um, brochure that Lenny is gonna go over a little bit later. So I just wanna point out a couple things in your program. Um, so before I do that, I just wanna point out um, my conference uh, auxiliary staff, Allison Cabisco. Um, she keeps me sane, so um, if you think that I do a good job with the conference, it's really her that ha she has to do all the work. Um, I could not have pulled this off without her. And she was, wave Allison. <laughs> She was the editor for the program, and so um, she really made sure that all of this got put together so you guys would have a lot of really useful information in your program. Um, so I wanna go over a couple pages really quickly. On page four, there's a lot of information here that you might be uh, asking questions about. If you're interested in knowing the Wi-Fi for down here in the meeting rooms, that information is there at the top of page four. And if you um, are on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, you might notice there's a TV screen out where the registration area was. And that TV screen is gonna be streaming pictures that all of you are taking throughout the entire conference. So your pictures can load onto that if you use the hashtag CCL2016. And that hashtag is on page four, if you forgot. So we're gonna be streaming your pictures on that TV screen out there, and it's streaming on our website. So the live streaming people that are tuning in from home can see what's happening here, and so it's super exciting that we can do that this year. I wanna shout out um, a huge thank you to our sponsors. Um, that's at the bottom of page four, so make sure um, you check out who is uh, sponsoring. And then we've got our schedule on page five. This is gonna be your friend. So everything you need to know, where you need to go, is gonna be um, on this page, so um, refer to it. Um, you can see the schedule for uh, this morning, and um, then uh, on the next slide um, will be uh, the schedule for Monday and Tuesday. Um, so uh, we're gonna have a break in just um, a couple of minutes, and um, then we're gonna have the group leader liaison uh, session in here. Uh, we're gonna have the climate advocate training, which is formerly known as the Group Start Workshop, um, across the uh, hallway and the ambassador room. And then uh, we have something new this year for, called the Skills Building uh, Workshop. And um, so on page 10, you have descriptions of the Skills Building Workshops. Um, so you can kind of see uh, what you, uh, which ones you might wanna attend. So the, again, the group leaders and liaisons are gonna stay in this room. Anyone taking the Group Start Workshop, Climate Advocate Training, if you've never had that, it's gonna go right across the hallway into Ambassador. If neither of those apply to you, then you get to attend our skills building workshops and um, they're really um, being led by some amazing staff and uh, volunteers. Um, and so you can see the breakdown for where those are gonna be on page six of the program. So you'll see some boxes and it'll tell you which rooms um, they are going to be held in. Uh, they're gonna be 40 minutes long, there'll be a five minute break between them for you to switch rooms if you need to, but those rooms are right beside each other so you don't have to walk very far. Um, and then the state and regional sessions is on page six as well towards the bottom. So our state and regional meetings that'll happen this afternoon are there. Okay, so just a couple more things I wanna point out. Um, so um, let's see. Uh, we have your own personal map on page eight of the program. 
So if you want to flip to page eight, we're in the Regency Ballroom right now. Um, so you can see Ambassador is right across the hall, and then the Diplomat and Palladian Room, which are the orange and purple color towards the top of your mat. Um, those are the rooms where we are going to have the skills building workshops this morning. And then uh, all of the rooms are color coded with the name of the session. So hopefully that will help you find the room you're looking for more quickly. I wanna give a shout out to the action teams. Um, so if you're one of the CCL action teams, we've got many of them um, that are here. And so thank you for the work you're doing. Our action teams specialize in certain areas. So we've got a coal country action team. We have a public health action team. We have uh, a national security action team. So, and many, many more. So those teams uh, so have some sort of expertise in those areas. And so they're helping to educate other um, folks in those, um, those sectors um, about what we're doing um, and they're making great connections. And they're having tabling um, that you can stop by their tables, you can learn more about them if you want to. Uh, they'd be glad to talk to you. Maybe you wanna um, join one of the teams or, or start one of your own if you're an expert on something. And those are gonna be located um, in the corridor that is adjacent to the um, pool. So it overlooks the pool. Um, and so that's um, where those are gonna be located. So if you go towards the Diplomat and Palladian, if you just go down the stairs, you'll see the pool to the left. All the action team tables are gonna be back there. Okay, so on um, toward Okay, um, so very quickly, Mark's gonna give me the hook. Um, lobbying resources um, on page 30, uh, we're gonna go over those tonight. Um, there are restaurants um, nearby the Omni Shoreham on page 31. And then back on, uh, on page 28 is the action team listing. And then, sorry, I'm just trying to find um, the, oh, here it is. On the inside back cover um, is the uh, map, of Cap uh, map of the subways, and the back is the map of Capitol Hill. So we'll talk more about this um, later tonight um, so that you're able to find your way there tomorrow. Um, and uh, the app. There's information in the program uh, and towards the front uh, about our app, and that app is being updated as things change. So if a room location does need to be changed, um, that will be updated live on the app. So if you have a smartphone and you wanna download that, instructions are in your program how to do that. So the program is your friend, that's the uh, main point. And um, if you have any questions, the interns have a little ribbon on their name tag. So look for one of our interns and they're happy to help you. So I hope that um, you all are as excited about this as I am, and I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to find me or any of the interns. So thank you for being here. Would you, could, would you put my slides up? Okay, good. So the question that we want to just uh, lay out is, um, are we making progress? So um, we know we have the Gibson resolution. Uh, we suspect now people are past their primaries. We'll get more people to that one. Next one, Ash. We've got the Bipartisan Climate Solutions Caucus. Danny's going to have some. <clears throat> Danny's going to have some exciting things to say about that tonight. Uh, we know that in terms of rating our members of Congress from 2015 to 2016, we went from rating 20% of Republicans believing that climate change was human cause to 40%. And we know also that last year, 2015, we rated 138 members of Congress as would vote for or sponsor our bill. This year, it's 184, so that's a 33% increase. Okay, and then here's the last thing I want to leave you with. First of all, this is CCL, so that means the next sessions will start at precisely 1015. But the last thing I want to leave you with is what we don't have this year, I mean, what we do have this year is something we've never had going into any other year, and that is three Republican offices who've told us they intend to introduce pricing legislation next year. Yeah.